The villains in Jujutsu Kaisen are the most despicable, awful creatures I have ever seen in my life. I don't know which one of them I hate more, honestly. Every action they take is an effort to harm the main characters as much as they can, and all of this makes it very clear who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Or does it? You see, I thought the first season established pretty clearly that these guys are bad, they're not sympathetic, and must die. But in the second season, this started to change, particularly with the character of Jogo. You see, Jogo was a character that I didn't think much of originally. I mean, look at this guy, it's the dude from Monster Sync. He showed up against Gojo and got folded like an omelet, then just kind of sat back and chilled. I didn't realize you were chill like that. We also didn't really know what his motivation was. Like, okay, curses are evil and stuff, but considering Jogo is as as intelligent as he is, there must be a reason he's doing this stuff, but we got nothing. Season 2 started and for a while we just saw the regular Jogo. It wasn't until the Sukuna fight that I started to feel kind of bad for him. I felt bad for him because I truly understood his motivations. He wanted to be like humans, he wanted to have what they have, a society of curses where they live together. He feels genuine companionship with other curses like Dagon or Hanami, something we haven't seen any other curses do. He feels more like human than curse, which which is why he's so different from the other curses. He isn't able to grow as he is too focused on being a human, constantly fighting his own nature. When he acts like a curse, he achieves the most success, like when he takes out the three sorcerers in Shibuya or just randomly burns people. And every time he fights his nature, he gets burnt and in the end gets consumed by his own flame. His volcano head that I originally thought was funny and goofy is now very symbolic and a great metaphor. I was honestly sad to see him go so early in the story after finally getting Getting attached to him. Like just once, I wanted to see him just win or succeed in like a one-on-one -on -one fight instead of getting absolutely demolished by like gods. But you know who I wasn't sad to see go? I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk, I hate the way that you dress. Mahito is an absolute scumbag. I know this man puts on the black air forces every day when he wakes up in the morning. In fact, he probably keeps them on while sleeping. Mahito is exceptionally good at one thing, and that is making the audience hate him. A lot of stories has this one character that you just hate, that you want to beat the ever-living shit out of, because that's just how annoying they are. That is how much pain they cause you, and they are not even a real person. And part of the reason these characters work so well is that you know that they're gonna get what's coming to them. And when they do, it will be immensely satisfying. Mahito takes joy in torturing others and seeing how it affects that person. And this is what makes him a perfect antagonist for this story and for Yuji. When Jogo dies, he says that to humans, death is a mirror and Mahito is that mirror. Everyone knows that death exists and is inevitable, but spend their whole life ignoring and running from it. After all, no one wants to die, so they hide from it. Yuji rejects that. He has his own outlook on it and certain beliefs on how one should die. He doesn't care about his own life, but wants to save and help as many people as he can before dying. This means that killing Yuji won't cost Mahito any satisfaction. Instead, he kills the people he cares about. Junpei, Nobara, Nanami, whoever he can get his hands on ought to see how it affects Yuji. He wants to break him. He experiments with people and death like he was a child. And every time Mahito succeeds in this, he is at his happiest. He laughs in Yuji's face, talks shit like it's a COD lobby. That's why your mama did. This is the happiest Mahito has ever been. And after Yuji is finally broken, he's ready to kill him and move on to the next. But Yuji doesn't break. He overcomes his doubts and his convictions become firmer than they ever have been. The opposite of what Mahito wanted. After trying his best to break Yuji, he accidentally created a monster. A monster who will not stop hunting its prey until it's dead. Yuji accepts that he and Mahito are the same, killing in line with their own personal morals or interests. The only difference is who they are killing. This is one of the best scenes in the story, and it exists because of Mahito. Every time he takes someone away from Yuji, he receives massive growth and develops as a character, and this is exactly the job of the antagonist. And speaking of antagonist, we also have the main antagonist of the series. At least I think he is, Sukuna. I love Sukuna. He is the first antagonist we meet in the story and he quickly became one of my favorite characters, despite not seeing much of him. Much like other older shonen, he is a demon stuck inside a young boy. Hold on. Except this time, I'm not so sure the boy will befriend or master this demon. I think one of the things that works best with his character is his intelligence. In so many situations, he does things that are so big brain, like absolutely 500 IQ plays. The first 
first instance of this happens in the beginning of the story when he creates a pact with Yuji. Yuji dies because of Sukuna ripping his heart out, giving Yuji two options, die or allow Sukuna to kill more people. Either is a win-win for Sukuna, as he is able to come back via the pact, and this pact allows him to take over Yuji's body at any point he wants, the only condition being that Yuji forgets everything about this pact. I haven't read the manga, but I can guess how this is gonna play out. It's incredible setup and really builds up Sukuna as a solid antagonist. I think the best part of his character and one of the most defining things is that he does not bow down to anyone. He will not accept anyone's help or help anyone else as he sees that as a weakness. He believes that if you are not strong enough then you don't deserve to win. And he shows his beliefs numerous times in the series, all in very similar ways. The first one being when he doesn't help Mahito. In fact, he feels insulted that Mahito would even dare touch him. This is such a good moment because it's character defining and tells us exactly what type of person Sukuna is. He's not like Mahito or the other curses, he is his own character. This is why he doesn't help Mahito or Jogo or those random sisters. <laughs> This is why he tells Jogo that he should have burnt everything in his path until he reached Satoru Gojo, the strongest. Anyone trying to do anything else or fight their nature are foolish in Sukuna's eyes. When or if Sukuna dies in the story, I would expect them to have a very different reaction to Mahito's death. Instead of running away like a little bitch, I would think his reaction would be more accepting, fighting to the very end. After all, if he dies, that simply means he wasn't strong enough. But of course, I could be wrong as I've only seen two seasons, so we'll have to wait and see. Man, okay, this is getting a little too deep, so let's quickly talk about one of my favorite villains in Jujutsu Kaisen. Haruta. What? I love Haruta as a villain so much, and it has a lot to do with the reasons why Mahito works so well. He's just annoying, and an asshole, and an absolute piece of garbage, but he's my piece of garbage. Aww. In all seriousness though, I don't understand why they killed him off so early. I feel like he hadn't reached his true black air force potential. I just love how before he died, no one was able to get rid of him. Like he kept killing people, kept causing chaos and enjoying himself and no one could truly stop him even though he wasn't even strong. Like this dude is straight up weak as hell and was still pulling off the things he did. The only reason he died was because of his random ass ability that just stopped working. Like we literally got into introduced to his ability as he died. This man went too soon, RIP. I mean love him or hate him, he gave us one of the most satisfying moments in the series when Nanami absolutely just curb stomps this man into oblivion. I like Nanami even more than I did before after that. And who's the reason for that? Haruta. Everyone give a big round of applause for Haruta. I love the JJK villains because they're so different from each other. Everyone has their own motives and beliefs, but they all still have that same batshit crazy personality. Generally, I've started to get a deeper appreciation for the characters of this series, so make sure to check out this video where I break down some of my favorite side characters in Jujutsu Kaisen.